This is one video of many. The links to the other videos are in the description. If you go to ipengineering.us and then go to this apps tab, this is where the project is outlined and documented. So it looks pretty thin now, but as this project continues, it'll start to populate. But in here, I have a bunch of fundamentals, a bunch of the utilities that we'll use like file IO, joystick, a bunch of the libraries that I wrote. And then down here will be all the progression of the videos. This is really the best place to kind of follow it along and fill in the gaps. And then of course on the YouTube page, there'll be all the videos. I don't really recommend trying to follow through on YouTube. I would go to the website to get more of a clear direction. And I grossly underestimated how difficult it is to provide sort of documentation for videos. But another benefit of having the website over just the YouTube page is, for example, if we go into the DLL, section which is really what this video is tailored to here's the code so you don't have to ask for it in the comments just come here copy it out download it there's probably going to be errors absolutely try and maybe just email me let me know or if you if you want to contribute please i'm open to it this is such a monumentous effort to do this and i understand not a whole lot of people watch these videos if you feel like contributing in any way and you can positively add to this please by all means do it if you find the introductory video for this project, you'll see that I really talk in detail about why I chose the split architecture between C Sharp and .NET as the front end and C++ DLL as the back end. And I really go into why I do that. But so this video here is about setting up the Visual Studio project to achieve this functionality. Put in some buttons in a text box. We added a callback to the button we put in an if statement with a DLL call, okay? So it's a class namespace. So we have to set that up, that functionality with the right prototypes and keywords. We have a header file, which we don't need right now, but it will become useful later. We have our prototype for our C++ exports, and then we have the actual code, underlying code inside of our C++ DLL. And then the other tricky thing was we had to configure it for exclusively 64. And then we changed our output path so that our EXE and DLL by default are in the same folder. In the new project wizard, we could either create a solution with our C Sharp application or our C++ application. It doesn't matter. We'll pick Visual C Sharp, Windows Desktop, and then Windows Forms app and then hit OK. Just like in the last video, it brings up the default layout. The next thing before you get too far is make sure you can build the solution and that you have all the components that you need. So sometimes it'll load the template, but it won't have all of the install installation files that you need. So you'll have to use the Visual Studio Installation Manager and start checking all the option boxes until you get this to succeed. Because we're using split architecture between C Sharp and C++, get in the habit of clicking build and build solution. And we'll talk about that why, but there's no guarantee that our DLL will compile first before the C Sharp application. So it's just get in the habit build, and then when it succeeds, then hit run. If you're used to programming.net, you'll see that this path you'll become familiar with this path, but because we're using C++ and .NET, we are gonna change this. But just for now, make sure that you can run this EXE outside of Visual Studio. And that's gonna tell you whether or not you have all the correct installation. And also now is a pretty good time to, if you're not developing on the same computer you're planning on deploying to, before you go through all the effort, make sure that this runs on that computer. To add in our DLL, I want to come over to the Solution Explorer, right click and hit Add New Project. We're going to add in our C++ Windows Desktop Dynamic Link Library, that's our DLL. 
don't worry that it says Visual C++. That doesn't actually mean .NET or CLI implementation. It, what we want is a Win32 dynamic link library, and that's what it will put in there by default. Uh, if you're using an older version of Visual Studio, just click console application, and when you hit next, it will ask you how to configure it, and you can check the box for um, ELL as opposed to console application. So you can see now we have both projects. Because we put in our C-sharp project first, it puts it as it shows as this one is bold. If it doesn't, you want to right click on it and hit set as startup project. If your DLL is set as the startup project and you go and try and, even if it builds successfully, if you go and try and run, there's not like, there's nothing to run in a DLL. So it throws this warning, right? Like unable to start program because a DLL is not a program. So you want to make sure that this is bold and set as the startup project. Let's add in some functionality to our C Sharp application that will rely and call upon our DLL. So I'm gonna come in, throw in a button, and then I'm gonna come in and put in a text box. Okay. So the functionality would be when I, I need to put our DLL call into here and then say, maybe whatever it returns or if it true returns an expected result put something back into our text box just so we know that it worked let's start with the dll and looking at the solution explorer we see under source files we see three things so one is the comp uh, pre-compiled header that's this one just leave it alone if you get a warning saying something about pre-compiled header make sure that uh, this is in there. If that option was checked when you start, when you built the project. The other two important ones are this DLL main and then one that's named the same thing that your project is. This DLL main function here is what Windows actually calls every time that there's an event related to the DLL. So for example, when it's loaded, the code inside here would run, would be executed every time a process attached. Every time a thread is started, this code would run. Every time a thread exits, this code would run. Every time your DLL is unloaded from the application, the code in here would be executed. Just understand that this is the entry point for the DLL, and if you don't have any sort of process specific code, if all we're doing is calling functions, then we don't need to touch this at all. The other file that it gives you by default is the one with the same name as the DLL project. But this is where all of your function calls go. So let's throw in a function called init that returns an integer and takes two parameters, two integers as a parameter. So these are screen height, screen width. We'll, we'll just throw in some numbers for that uh, that don't really mean anything right now, but later we'll come back to this. So all this other sort of Greek stuff um, is, is specific to how we need to export these functions in a way that C Sharp can understand it. So um, extern C basically means that we're using the C interface and then this, uh, this function call here, uh, DLL specification, and then we're telling it we wanna export it, return an integer. And then here that the C declaration, we're telling it not to add um, special characters to the name to enable us to use overloaded functions. So because we're using this and not the standard call or the standard convention, we can never have another function called init. So right now, let's throw in an init function that returns the sum of the two inputs, right? So it's like the sum function. This right here is all we would need to export a function from the DLL, but what I like to do and what most people with libraries do is put these prototypes into a header file. So we can add this new item header file, and I like to give it the same name again. So this is dll1.h and then I'm going to put all my prototypes in here. 
Okay, so now that we have our function inside of our DLL and we have all the exports here, what we need to do now is in our C Sharp application, we need to add a class that's going to stand as the interpreter for the interface to our DLL. So in here, on the Solution Explorer, I'm going to right click on the project. I'm going to hit Add, Add New Item, and then I want to add a C Sharp class. And I don't want to call that, so uh, I'm just going to name it same thing as the DLL out of habit and hit Add. Okay, so it gave us our, our class file. You could see it in the Solution Explorer here. And what we want to do is add a using directive for system runtime and then interop services. And what that's going to enable us to do is use our DLL import keyword and add in the prototype for our function that we just wrote. So essentially right here, we're telling it we want to use the DLL import function. We're telling it the name of the DLL to go look for and then the calling conventions. We use the C declaration. So if you're using the standard call convention, that goes here. And then there's some other keywords that we'll use uh, as we start getting into more advanced programming. You don't need the dot DLL here. It's just assumed. And one note here, I don't put the full path here. I just put DLL1, and then I rely on Windows itself to go find the DLL. And we'll talk about that when we go to run this and it throws the error. And now what we need to do is go into our Form 1 and add in that functionality. So here, what I'm going to do is say if, if I call this and it returns 3 plus 5, which is 8, then put in here inside the text box one text i want it set it equal to uh success and if not to no success so if we build this if we build this assuming we have no errors what what that means is the compiler understands all of the path between everything but because we didn't really configure it i'm expecting that it's going to throw an error so we run it and it loads and everything seems fine but when we go to enact our functionality we should get an exception yeah unable to load dll1 the problem is that we never linked the application to the DLL. So the easiest way to do that is to just put the EXE and the DLL in the same folder. So we come into the Windows Explorer here and you see inside of our project, we have the Visual Studio files and we have two separate folders that, inc that include the project files. So we have all of the C Sharp stuff and then in here, we have all of the C++ stuff. Inside the root, because we're in 64-bit, we have this, debug. And then here's the output file for the DLL. And as I was saying before, this is the normal convention for C++ directories. But to get the EXE, we go into bin. 64 debug and pull it out of here. So I'm just going to copy it for right now and put it inside this one. And if I run it in here and hit button one, we should get success. So this tells me the application's working. And the next step is what I want to do is program or configure Visual Studio to update the exe inside this path and not the default.net path. To do that, what we need to do is come into the Solution Explorer, go to the C Sharp project, right click on it and go to properties. And then we get the properties window. What we want to do is go to build, the build tab, and then the output path. We want to change it from that default to the normal C++ path. Make sure that when you're in the debug folder, you have the debug configuration set. And then when you close out of this, 
and go back in, it's not going to save the full path. It's going to do the relative path. Okay, so now when we build this and run it from here, it should, we should have success. All right, good. So one final note on productivity. What I like to do, and it's kind of hard, but it helps me out a lot, is to arrange my tabs in sort of this descending order from high level to low level code. So the designer obviously is the highest level. You don't deal with code at all. Then we have this form one CS dot, and where this is where all of our C sharp code goes. Then we have our DLL interface uh, in C sharp, our class. All right, and then we have our header file. We have DLL main. We just really never need to look at that unless we're dealing with it. And then we have our CPP. So. This sort of descending order in our tabs really helps me sort of situate where quickly where I need to be. So to recap what we did, we put in some buttons in a text box. We added a callback to the button. We put in an if statement with a DLL call. Okay, so it's a class namespace. So we have to set that up, that functionality with the right prototypes and keywords. We have a header file, which we don't need right now, but it will become useful later. We have our prototype for our C++ exports, and then we have the actual code, underlying code inside of our C++ DLL. And then the other tricky thing was we had to configure it for exclusively 64, unless we want to teach our DLL to compile both in 32-bit and 64-bit, and then configure our C Sharp application to then reference the correct one, depending on which CPU it is. Or we could skip that and force it to only compile a 64. And then we changed our output path so that our EXE and DLL by default are in the same folder. And then just by convention and what I'm used to, and because almost all of our heavy code will be in C++, we picked the C++ file directory convention. So that's it. Sounds simple. You're probably going to have a whole lot of errors to work through. Just Google the error and try and sort it out with the properties. It's most likely going to be a configuration and I unfortunately can't help because I'm just working with my implementation of Visual Studio. So if you really have problems and can't find solutions, just reach out and We'll see you in the next video.